Hello and welcome to episode 55 of my podcast all about knitting and crochet and my yarn shop here in Wiesbaden, Germany. I'm Kiko and today is June 15th, 2020. Today I'm wearing two older pieces and the first one is my Via Jante. Um, like this, it doesn't look as if it was just an accessory. It looks like a whole piece of clothing in itself, which it kind of is. Um, and it's one of the most famous um, designs by Martina Behm, a very well-known German knitwear designer. Uh, and you can get the pattern as a single pattern um, from Ravelry, but it's also part of her new book, um, which this is a German version, but it's also available in English, and it's called Strickmich originals I think in English because she um, shows showcases all the her original designs so she came up with a lot of different ways of um, especially knitting shawls um, that uh, have that tend to have very easy instructions but have a very unique design and look and um, so the viajante is one of them viajante is an um, it's a Portuguese word and it means traveller. And she says this is very good for travelling because with one piece you have a lot of different ways of wearing it. And I'll show you mine in a minute. But this is what the original looks like, or at least the one that she made um, for this book. And there she wears it like a shawl, but um, the way I'm wearing mine is more like this. And here you can see how long this can be, um, depending on how long you knit yours. Um, yeah. So that's her um, version. And mine was a bit of um, um, a project to use up, not leftover yarn really, but odd balls. I had four different um, color balls of the same yarn. This is Lana Cosa Lace Merino. And I had two, two single color balls and two multicolor balls, but I felt they fit together nicely. So I started with this ball of yarn, then um, I used this one, and then I had one with several grays. And then the last one, I had a black ball of yarn, but then I, um, a friend of mine had this um, dark gray ball that she gave to me, and I gave her the black one. And with all my via janta, I always put in beads on the edging. That's not part of the pattern, but I just love putting beads on, on things that I have. So, um, yeah, so this is, it's a bit like a poncho that you can sort of go into, but then it has this really long end that, um, yeah, that just flows down. It can flow down your back or the side, depending on where you want to have it. It comes down to this point. And as you can see, there's beads all over this lace section. And that was the first time I used these square beads. I don't know where I picked them up, but I saw them and I thought that was interesting. And um, yeah, so I used these little square beads. And what I can do is um, if I take it off, whoops, um, and then I can show you how you can just wear it as a shawl. So this, now it looks just like a simple triang triangular shawl, but it's it's double thickness because, um, yeah, this is where I went in at the beginning. And then I can just wear it around my shoulders like this, or I can wrap it around several times. Um, and um, I like to hide the, the blue bit and make sure that all the beads on the etching show. <laughs> yeah, so that's the Via Jante by Martina Behm, but I'll just take it off so you can see the crochet tunic I'm wearing. This is um, a pure cotton yarn by Wolle Rödel, um, and the design is out of a Japanese book. Um, I'll just show you the whole thing. Oops, it goes down to this length. The lower part is crocheted in the round. The front and back are worked first and then you join them together, crochet down and then the um, just just one or two rows around the armholes and the neck, the neckline. And um, I don't know if you're familiar with Japanese crochet and knitting patterns, 
um, if you're not, I'll show you a book. It's not the one that has this pattern because I couldn't find that. I think I gave the book to a former colleague of mine who has crocheted quite a few of the things in the book. And when um, I left that workplace, I gave the book to her because I, I knew she loved it and she wanted to do more out of it. But I'll show you a different one just to show you how it works because I do not read Japanese. So this is the first... Japanese uh, crochet book that I got um, since I've since I moved to Wiesbaden and um, I've I made several of these um, projects so for example I crocheted both of these but in very different colors oh no I did this one in red that that looks quite like the one in the book but this one I did in a like mint color so it looks very different and um, what else did I do? There are quite a few in here that I still want, would like to do. Um, so maybe someday I'll do more. This is the first one I made from, from this book. And I crocheted this out of blue um, sock yarn. So it looks quite different from the one here in the book, but I, I like it a lot. But the thing about Japanese patterns is that they, they have like drawings. I won't show the whole pattern, but they draw every stitch. So it's really easy to follow the pattern because um, they just draw every single stitch that you make. And it makes it a lot easier to follow than most of German, most German um, crochet patterns. And even with knitting, they will show every stitch and then they, they'll have a diagram with um, how the piece is supposed to look, what size or how wide and high it's supposed to be and also for necklines they will give you every stitch on how to decrease and increase stitches so i think it's it's um, a lot easier to follow japanese patterns even if you do not read or speak or understand japanese because of all the the pictures and the drawings yeah so that's what i'm wearing today then on to my finished objects i finished three things last week and um, the first one I'm going to show you are these wrist warmers that I knit out of baby alpaca lace yarn by Hansa farm and um, yeah I hadn't knit on them the week before so I did show them last week but I really needed to finish them so I made an effort to to really finish it so this is what it looks like now and um, they are for a young girl, so her hands are probably a bit smaller than mine. Um, but she picked the color and the pattern, and I'm sure she will really enjoy getting these. So that's number one. Then number two are these socks. The cotton shorty socks that I knit. Um, and they're on these nice sock blockers um, by... Um, Daniela Svoltopf is who makes these sock blockers that I'm using and um, yeah and it's an op opal um, cotton sock yarn and I knit it's a very simple didn't really use a pattern just um, a bit of stockinette then I uh, knit a fish lips kiss heel and then I added some short rows to make this opening a bit wider and um, and then I just knit in stockinette, very simple. The stripes run differently on both socks the way I like it. And um, yeah, so these are just a pair of very nice summer socks that are finished now. And the third finished object is the little gnome that I started weeks ago. I have no idea why it took me so long to finish the little guy. But that's the new gnome I knit. So he doesn't have a beard, but he has a jumper and it has a cable on it. So it's a cable jumper. And that's the reason he doesn't have a beard, because if he had a beard, you wouldn't see the cable. Or you, I could put the jumper on backwards so you could see the cable on the back. That's a possibility. And I've tried it with this guy. So I've knit and finished this gnome, I don't know, a few weeks or months ago. And I planned on knitting three. I'm still planning on knitting all three, but... Um, so those two are done now and um, the third gnome will be knit out of this color 
and the pullover or jacket that he'll get will have either this or that color, <laughs> I don't know yet. And um, so they can swap clothes and um, they are very obviously related to each other. <laughs> yep, so these are patterns by, uh, this is a pattern by um, Sarah Shira from Imagine Landscapes and it's the never not gnoming gnome with the never naked gnome clothes. These are just a lot of fun. I love them. And the yarn is by Woldackel, a German hand dyer. But they told me that they discontinued those color except for, for this light color that's called, um, I think it's called Young Boy. So this is the only color that's available at the moment. But I will try and talk them into repeating this color because I just love it so much. Yep, so that's the gnomes. That's the finished objects for this week. Um, on to my works in progress. And I have continued knitting on my socks. Um, I did very little work on the spiral socks, but that's okay. These are just, um, yeah, one of my favorite travel projects. So um, I don't, I don't have to finish that really quickly. I finished the first sock, so that's in the shop. I can show people what, um, how a spiral sock works and what it looks like, and I can, I can just finish that. Um, anytime I like. The other pair of socks I'm still knitting on is the knit along from the, the mystery knit along um, from the German Kunkelstube called Kunkelkall um, and the pattern is called Zack It was a mystery but now the last clue came out on, on Saturday so now we know what the socks supposed to look like and this is how far I've got. I haven't finished them yet obviously. Um, that was the first clue then the, no, the first clue was just the, the cuff. And then the second clue was this pattern. And then the third clue was the heel. I um, can't remember what the, the English name for this kind of heel is. But what you do is you decrease, yeah, you increase quite a lot um, while you knit all the stitches. And then you knit this, um, the heel turn, I think is what it's called. And... Um, it looks like like a triangle like this and um, yeah and now the last clue was for the foot and what you do there is uh, we just repeat this pattern that was on the leg already and then um, just a simple toe and then and that's it um, I I think the, the construction of the heel is quite interested interesting I've um, knit this um, heel a few times before I find that it um, that the socks um, get really big that way so it's a bit loose on my foot and um, I'm still not quite sure whether I should keep these socks for myself or give them to somebody else um, which means I'm not quite sure how long to knit them yet um, I really like the color I would have liked to, to have these socks but because they are a bit loose on me I'm thinking I might um, give them to somebody else, which probably means I'll have to make them a bit longer. Most people's feet, especially at least in Germany, are, are bigger than mine. So, um, yep, yeah, I'll think about it and I'll just keep knitting for a while and then I'll have to make up my mind at some point. And I'll let you know. And you'll find out when the socks are finished how big they are and uh, maybe I'll tell you who they're for. Maybe I won't. We'll see. <laughs> Okay, so that's all the socks. No wrist warmers at the moment. Um, then let's get on with the next works in progress. I did a little crochet last week um, and I um, finished this month's um, part of the Carnaby crochet along from the Simply Crochet magazine. And these are the two pieces um, we could crochet this month. I think they look really nice. Um, I think the look is quite different from the other pieces because there's no yellow and green. So if you compare these pieces, I think you can see what I mean. Um, so just a quick overview of what I've done so far. I think that was number two. I don't remember what number these were. So these are the small pieces I have so far. 
these are six pieces then I have two squares that are this size and then the very first piece was as big as those two together so that was that one so this is slowly slowly things are slowly coming together and um, yeah so now I have to wait till next month to continue this pullover which is crocheted out of a DK weight sock yarn by Opal except for the blue which is an old yarn that I still had in my stash and um, maybe this week I'll get round to crocheting the cotton pieces because I'm crocheting a wool um, version and a cotton version of this pullover for this crochet along. Then I whoops, added a few pieces on my memories blanket. Um, so this is, these are all the pieces that I already have. And I added these three last week. And um, that's a glittery yarn by Opal that I knit um, those knee-high socks or stockings um, where I held two yarns together. Um, that was one of the colors. And I, I, if I don't forget, I'll add next to it, I'll um, add the color that I held this double with. And then next to that, I want to add the square um, from the other pair of uh, stockings that I knit. So that those three colors that I used to knit those two pairs of stockings, that they are next to each other. This is um, a Voldacke yarn um, that I knit. I used I used for another gnome that I knit a while ago. That was the last mystery gnome. No, no, it wasn't the last. Oh yes, it was the last mystery gnome. I think with it that was the first gnome that had a jumper, and I knit the the jumper out of this color. And this is uh, another Opal yarn. It's from the comedy series. And I knit um, shorty socks. I think those were the first shorty socks that I used, uh, that I knit the short rows after the heel, not just for the heel, but after the heel. And, um, and there's a funny story. I wore them last week and, um, and then I took them off before I went home on my bike and I put them in my basket. And I lost one of the two socks and I was a bit upset when I got home and I realized I'd lost one of them. But I thought, well, I can knit, I can knit another one because I still have the yarn. And then the next day on my way home, I found the sock. It was still on the street, in the middle of the street. <laughs> so that was quite funny. Yep. So these are the three that I added last week. And this is where the next three will be uh, attached. Okay. So that's my old memories. Old projects memory blanket is what I call the project because I want to knit one square for every project I finish with um, sock weight yarn. That's the idea. Then I continued knitting on the Kangaroots by Stephen West and um, that's the front, that's the back and I'm knitting on those side stripes that connect the front and back and I almost finished this stripe. Oh, this is the waist yarn that holds the stitches um, because there are all I haven't um, bound off any stitch on that trousers yet because they will all be bound off um, with an eye cord once all the pieces are done. Yeah so this should be I should be able to finish that this uh, in the coming week and maybe I will start the stripe that goes in between here. That's my kangaroo shorts. This is a rather heavy project. It's DK weight sock yarn held double and um, it's quite heavy but it's going to be really warm because of that. Yep, so that's that. Uh, what else? Then I continued knitting on the haramaki I'm working on for my aunt. And I had started with this color yarn. And after I finished half the ball, I added in a contrast color. And I finished the contrast color. And I'm going, I 
went back to the to the main color and um, yeah there's some increases and decreases at the end and beginning and end of the rows so um, the loop or the the cowl itself will not be won't look like this so the stripe won't go down won't go down straight but um, this will be a bit on a bias which means that this contrast color piece is going to go round the cowl like this and um, I think it should look nice once it's done so um, theoretically this is half the haramaki half the loop and I will um, knit the other half of this ball and then I will have to add a second contrast color which wasn't the plan originally but I hadn't realized that I was supposed to have two balls of yarn from the main color and I don't so I will add in a second contrast color and then I will I will knit the second contrast color as wide as I need it to be so that this fits around the head or around the neck yeah it's quite long be quite a long loop I don't know if it's really going to work as a hat but we'll see I'll see when I get there yeah so that's the haramaki I'm working on what else have I got I've got my jacket and my pullover so I'll start with the hitofure jacket made of um, volmeise lace yarn that was a 300 gram ball and I weighed it last night and I still have more than 100 gram. I had about 130 something grams. So I only used a bit more than half the ball, which is a bit crazy because I think I've already knit quite a bit. The sleeves are done. I put in a longer cable um, into the jacket to try it on before I started filming. And I thought I'll leave it in so it's a bit um, easier to see how this jacket works and um, yeah I think it looks really nice I'm very happy with it last night I um, finished the third pattern repeat after the last increase and I did the next increase um, just the row with the increase and the row back and um, I will now finish this pattern repeat and do two more so I have three pattern repeats after the increase and then I will check again, I will try it on again and decide whether or not I will make more increases. But right now I don't think I will do more increases because this is, the jacket's already fairly wide. So the back goes down straight. So the, the pattern here looks the same as on the upper half because there are no increases, but both fronts have these increases. So the, the stockinette part in between the lace pattern grows. And I feel that this jacket is already wide enough. So even if it grows in length, it should be wide enough. But as I said, I'll finish those three pattern repeats and I'll try it on again. And then I'll see how I will continue and how much longer I will knit it. I want to make it fairly long so I can use as much of the yarn as possible. Um, you will see how that works out. And then my pullover my snowflake pullover that's that one so I had already finished the the patterning last week and now I've added the bit of length I needed um, for the yoke to be long enough and I've separated the sleeves uh, the, the sleeve stitches so this is one sleeve and this is the other sleeve and now I'm knitting on the front and backs this is how far I've got it's not too far but this is what the yarn looks like on the front of the pattern and on the back there's already quite a bit more to see the, those were the short rows so the colors come out a bit differently but now for the front and back the stripes should probably stay stay the same more or less and um, yeah what I usually do with top-down pullovers is um, I will finish this ball of yarn for the front and back and then instead of adding the next ball and finishing the front and back I will knit the sleeves so I don't have quite as much jumper to to work with while I knit the sleeves and when I finish the sleeves then I will um, continue with the front and backs and finish those and as, as I've said before I want to put this 
pattern. I want to repeat that on top of the ribbing, both at the arms and at the front and back. And um, when I first planned this pullover, uh, the pattern is from Tin Can Knits from their Strange Brew ebook, which um, gives you stitch counts for three different yarn weights. And, and then you can pick the patterns yourself. You can either um, use patterns that they offer or you can find your own. And I had picked out three different patterns to use, but then um, after I started knitting, I realized that the third pattern that I picked out, that was a really big pattern. It would have been too big. It wouldn't have fit on the, um, on the yoke of the pullover. And I didn't want to put it anywhere else. So I said, I'll leave it for a different um, project. And now I've had, had an idea on where to use it because um, this again is, um, is a subscription ball of yarn. So normally I would only have one ball of that color, but because I was so in love with this color when I first um, unpacked it, several people have offered to give me their blue um, ball of yarn and um, most of them have gotten a different ball of yarn from me there's lots to choose from and one person even just gifted um, their blue ball to me which I thought was really really generous and nice and um, and now I had I had an idea because I have more yarn than I need to knit the pullover I'm going to knit a skirt and I will knit the, the top of the skirt just with the beautiful blue color and then on the bottom of the skirt I will put the the big pattern that I'd originally um, planned for the pullover. And then I still have all three patterns together, two of the patterns in the pullover and then the big one on the bottom of my skirt. And um, yeah, that's what I'm planning to do now. Big plans, hope it'll work out. Okay, then last one, last um, project I've knit on last week. And that's my Haruni shawl. And um, I've been filming several videos, how-to videos in German, but still you could have a look if you wanted. And this is the mini shawl that I knit for the videos. So this very bright pink, that's chart A. The darker color is chart B. And then the, the, this color is chart C. So it's quite interesting to see how those um, charts look, what they look like when they're knit up and what the size is. So you can see that, I mean, chart A looks really small here. That's because you have to repeat it over and over again. And uh, chart B and C are about, it's about half, half the edge is chart B and the other half is chart C. And you can see that I did those crochet chains um, for the bind off. And um, I haven't um, uploaded the third video yet because it's um, um, we haven't processed it yet. Um, I have, I filmed it, but um, I need my husband's help to, to um, work on it and um, upload it. So I hope we'll get that done sometime this week. And then there'll be three how-to videos on it and how to knit the Haruni shawl. Yeah, and now that I've knit the, the edge on this one, I am really looking forward to doing that on my proper shawl. And that's this one. This is a Opal 3-ply sock yarn. And um, this is what I have left from my first ball of yarn. So this is 11 grams that I have left. And these are 75 gram balls because they run about 425 meters, just like the normal sock yarn but it only weighs 75 grams um, because it's only a three ply. So it's lighter and thinner than, than the normal sock yarn. And I have um, managed to do all the 14 pattern repeats that I planned on doing. So the pattern says to do, to knit chart A once and then repeat eight of the lines, um, eight of the rows 10 times. And I decided to do 14 to repeat it 14 times so it doesn't come out too small. And it's really hard to see how big the shawl is going to be because I have a fairly small needle or short needle in there. And it's not one that you can screw on and off. So 
it's more difficult to put a longer cable in and I thought well I don't really need it and you can just from looking um, at how long the sides going to be um, I think I can guess that this should be long enough so this is the middle of the shawl um, here so this is kind of the, the length in the middle of the shawl and I think it looks quite good um, especially as the, um, the edging is going to add quite a few centimeters on it and um, yeah so that's that's the plan I'm going to I just realized that the, the color the color started to pool in a funny way so all the blues are on this side and all the yellow is on this side that's quite funny I hadn't noticed while I was knitting because I was watching TV last night um, that's quite interesting yeah anyway um, I have been thinking about adding beads to the shawl as I said before I love putting beads into my knitting and I've seen some projects on Ravelry um, that had beads here on these stitches sort of where the leaf is and then on the in the crochet edges um, at the end and I really like that I've even been thinking of adding beads to this bit but it just might get too much but I haven't got any beads um, I haven't found the right beads yet let's say it like that I have several beads um, in my stash that I might use I might go and buy some new ones I don't know yet but until I found the right beads I can't go on knitting because I as I said I finished those 14 repeats and um, I will want to go on to chart B now and that's where I need the beads so that's about it just one more thing um, I've told you about the Opal subscription abo yarn so you always get one um, ball per color and then there's um, on Ravelry there's a group about the these subscription yarns and there's one um, discussion thread that's called Musterschlacht and that's called it's like a pattern battle and what they do is they pick one of those um, balls of yarn per package and this time it's this one and then you can, if you want to take part in this battle, you have to sign up with the pattern that you want to knit. And the rule is that you can only pick a pattern that has not been picked before. So that everybody taking part in this, um, or showing their pictures in this dis discussion thread, is knitting with this ball of yarn, but everybody is using a different pattern than the others. And I think it's very fascinating to have a look at how the same color will come out differently depending on what you knit with it. Um, I've taken part in these battles every now and then. I've usually not knit socks because most people knit socks and um, I've done shawls and baby clothes and I don't know what else but um, this time I haven't signed up yet and I am actually thinking of knitting a pair of socks because um, it just seems to fit and I have several patterns in mind that have not been picked yet um, but I want to make up my mind soon and sign up and start these socks and that's why I'm telling you about it so I won't put it off any longer but I will have to have started before next Monday so that's the plan okay so that's all I knit and crocheted last week and that's my plans for the future I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!